I say hello to all the colleagues in Cambodia. And now let's start with the presentation. Today, I, I'd like to talk about a new way to think about fixed prosthesis. I've always think about uh, fixed prosthesis, thinking about cemented or screw retained prosthesis. Now, uh, in, the, in, the, in the next slide, we are going to talk a new, about a new way of um, thinking about fixed prosthesis because cement retained and screw retained prosthesis, fixed prosthesis, have some issues that we still uh, won't be able to, uh, to overcome. Cement retained has, all, of course, uh, a, an excellent aesthetics, um, but it has uh, a lot of problems. And it easy to, it's easy to, to fix some disparallelism issues uh, with the cement retained. But it has a, a very weak point, that is when the screw gets loosened, it's almost impossible to remove the, the prosthesis once it's cemented. The screw retained is more uh, removable when you need it. Uh, if you have a fracture of the porcelain, or um, if you have a fracture of the porcelain, or you need to, to remove uh, your screw retained, it's ju just easy to unscrew the, the, the fixing screw and then you can fix it. Um, but uh, some, um, uh, some issues there are also with screw retained prosthesis. For instance, the, the, to, to, uh, to fix uh, uh, strong disparalism between implants is very difficult. To, um, sorry, technical communication. Potete chiudere l'audio di qualcuno che c'è l'eco fortissimo. Okay. Um, and now let's talk about um, how the, the, the implants are connected with the teeth because uh, this is the strong, the, the, the strong point to fix uh, once we, we talk about fixed prosthesis, uh, um, especially when we, when we deal with more than one fixture. So the first implant that was uh, put in the market was the external hexagon connection. And this was the brand mark like uh, implant. Uh, do you know uh, what was designed it for? This hexagon, external hexagon, was designed not to fix teeth over the implant, but to fix the implant. It was just the connection with the mounter that um, um, locked the implant and uh, allowed the dentist to uh, screw in the bone the implant. After uh, it was an improper use to use this for the single tooth, because when we started as dentists, we started to um, place single tooth over implants, we needed some reference point for uh, the rotation of the crown over the implant. And we kept uh, this um, uh, external hexagon um, as a reference point for the technician to keep the impression of the single tooth. But it was designed not for this purpose. The purpose of this implant was just to put um, over four or six implants a bar connected with the plate around the hexagon, not connecting with the hexagon. So I, um, uh, reviewing the literature, uh, I can say that it, uh, using this uh, was an, in the beginning uh, for the single tooth was an improper use. Uh, in fact, the market then uh, came out with more, um, with more, um, uh, with more um, strong connection between abutment and implant. And they started to make a bigger screw hole, a bigger um, hexagon. And then in the market in the 90s came out uh, the internal connection. And this kind of connection were made uh, for single tooth and they are perfect and still they are perfect for single tooth because when we talk about single tooth restoration for one implant and one tooth, we just need, we need a, a strong connection between the uh, abutment and the implant. They must act uh, as they are, uh, as they were a single piece. They spread out in the market. We, uh, they are the most commonly used implant in the market because they, um, they, it's easier. They, they have a better aesthetic outfit because uh, you save a lot of space for the crown, for the technician. Um, it's easier to um, put over the internal connection different kind of abutment to compensate um, surgical uh, problem misplacement of the implants. 
but uh, we uh, used them uh, for improper use all again because we started to use them uh, to use internal connection also for multiple fixture in restoration but when we um, are, are talking about restoration with more than one implants so from two or more then we have to think about to use the internal connection starting since we we take the impression because implants are never perfectly parallel and so when we uh, have to use multiple fixture implants and we have implants with internal connection we have to use just the external ring and when we take the impression we need to take impression with um, non-engaging transfer what do i mean with this i explain this with this picture uh, because it's easier to understand so let's say that we have two implants put in the bone and they are bone level so um, it's the time it's the moment now to take the impression implants are never perfectly parallel i have exaggerated in this picture but then i try to take impression with uh, engaging transfer and i put my engaging transfer when i say engaging transfer i mean transfer that get a strong connection with the internal hexagon or conomorph connection of the implant well, I put my uh, transfer, then I fix them uh, together with resin or with the impression uh, paste material. And then once it's hardened, it, became, it all became uh, a one piece, one single piece. When I try to extract, when I extract the impression from the implants, I pr produce a distortion of the implants because to put this out from here, I need the, this implant to move from its position exactly like this and this distortion is the first step of a uh, passivation of loose of passivation so passivation begins in the hand of dentistry not in, in the hand of technician because we are giving uh, uh, to the technician an impression that has some distortion inside because i moved this transfer and i'm and it has lost its, its original position uh, it doesn't happen if I use a non-engaging um, transfer because non-engaging transfer doesn't fit into the implant, but just um, give the position of the implant, the axis and the height of the implant, but not the position of the hexagon. And I don't need that. So why to introduce in the market a new abutment? Um, in the, the market is full of new abutment uh, for every kind of solution. Once we put an implant, uh, we have plenty of abutment. Maybe too much, maybe too many implants, too many abutments, sorry. And they, um, started, uh, they, start, they are starting to confusing our uh, practice. But uh, which are the main characteristics that we have to look for an abutment? Why do we uh, look for that specific abutment? The, the, the abutment is the link uh, with the fixed or removable prosthodontic connection. It's the link between the implant and the teeth. It has a, a, a pivot uh, rule uh, in, the, in the game. Because, uh, also, uh, especially when we place bone level implants, the abutment is the piece that, uh, that um, uh, set up the biological width connection. The biological width connection is not all around the implant, but around the, uh, the, the abutment. And also, it has to deal with the implant, of course. It has to have the best connection with the implant. So let's, let's have a look about how this new uh, uh, abutment that, that I'm talking about today is, uh, was born. It was born from the spherical uh, attachment. It was cut in half and maintained just the equator. And inside uh, the, the brand put, the, the, the company put a thread inside. So we can take advantage of the um, uh, under, undercut here and uh, uh, take advantage of the uh, uh, screw inside, of the thread inside. And we can use it matching with that screw, of course, and with a cigar ring. What is a cigar ring? Cigar ring is a, a, a non-complete ring. It works exactly like a spring that open up and close. And it, can, uh, it's, uh, it has a long history in mechanics. It, uh, in, uh, in dentistry, it was taken by drain entity. And uh, the way it works is exactly this. 
It's an incomplete wing, so it's open in one side. It has a, fat, a fatter part in the bottom, and this part goes exactly under the uh, equator <coughs> of the attachment. It has a handle with which you can uh, hold it and put it in its place. It must be placed by dentists in, uh, exactly in its um, uh, housing, in the metal housing that goes in the framework of the uh, denture that we are uh, building up. And then it opens up uh, over the equator and then clip when uh, the, the equator was passed, has passed. This is how it works in a frontal view. So the spring is opened and now uh, our fixed prosthesis is first of all, snapped on, clipped on our implants. Then we fix with a screw, of course, everything with a screw. And this is how it works with a full, uh, with a full arch. First of all, we have to put the equator over our implants. One, two, three, four. Uh, look, this, uh, this parallelism, exaggerated this parallelism, but it's a very common solution when you have the uh, foramen here um, uh, of the uh, alveolar uh, nerve. And then uh, inside the framework, you put your uh, Seeger ring and then you clip your fixed prosthesis over your implant. You see that there is a pattern of insertion and this mechanical uh, lock um, is locking completely the, uh, the, the denture of the fixed denture. After we put our screw, it's impossible by the patient to remove the, to remove the denture, of course, the bridge, to remove the bridge. In some cases, like uh, often occur in the upper jaw, in the maxillary bone, in some cases, uh, you have the opportunity, and we are going to talk more in detail about this, we have the opportunity to avoid the screw in the frontal incisor or in the canine. Why we can do it? Because um, when uh, you have uh, this strong disparallelism, it's um, an advantage for this system because we have a stronger lock. <clears throat> we have a stronger lock uh, between implants and uh, and the framework. So after you put your, um, after you put uh, some uh, lubrication, of course, and after you put your, um, exactly, after you put uh, your uh, cigar ring inside the housing, then everything is locked by the pattern of insertion. You remove the handle from the, from the cigar, and then the framework is ready to be clipped on the uh, implant platform, over the implant platform. You check that the, the clip is right with the special tool. And then after that, you just clip following the pattern of insertion. That is the opposite from the lower jaw. You start from the frontal, this, this time, you start from the frontal implants and then you clip them in the posterior implants. As you see, as you can see, in this kind of framework, you don't have the passing through screw. So you have just two screws and these two screws are not working as a mechanical retention because the retention is given by the cigar ring. The main work of this screw are just to fix them together, to fix all the pieces together. And this is very important because since you are changing the, the st mechanical stress that loads the screw, the screw loosening and the screw fracture become, become a very, very rare um, uh, evenience. Um, <clears throat> I, I, um, since I'm talking about something very new, I invite all the participants to ask uh, uh, using the question and answer or the chat uh, above, uh, so uh, you can um, you can you can talk. Uh, I'm very happy to answer, or Marco Vanini would be very happy to answer all the questions. So in this picture, it's easier to see the pattern of insertion and how the system works. So um, we take advantage of this this parallelism because the, we have an axis of insertion, a pattern of insertion. 
starting from the most tilted implant and then the, the, the straight implant. After that, we fix this uh, screw and everything is completely locked. Um, now I ask Marco Vanini, the uh, product expert, to talk about the fixing uh, screw that uh, has some features different from other, uh, from other screw. Okay, thank you, Dr. Vaccaro, uh, that uh, now I explain uh, about the di diameter. Uh, if you see in the screen, there is uh, two different diameters. The diameter of the uh, multi-unit abutment, it's a narrow diameter to the hours uh, uh, OT equator diameter screw. This is a very good uh, situation for you because it is a more difficult to unscrewing. But the second question is uh, it's very difficult to unscrewing because uh, if there's some time is I'm unscrewing, uh, the seeker give you the insurance after unscrewing, don't lose the stability of the bridge. Uh, after that, uh, I, I don't know, but I suppose that the diameter of the equator it's a narrow dimension to the locator and that is a don't uh, over dimension to the implant and sometimes you have the, the some another question about uh, the uh, final solution okay thank you marco now another thing that i want to talk uh, could you uh, spend your microphone? Oh, another another uh, important argument is um, the anti-rotation features. Because when we have multiple fixer, um, and when we fix an implant in the bone, when we screw in uh, an implant in the bone, we have a reference point uh, uh, that is our hexagonal. If we use uh, a device like a multi-unit, a tilted, angulated multi-unit abutment or an um, angulated uh, abutment for cemented crown, we strongly need that this hexagon must be kept in the perfect place, must be put in the perfect place by the surgeon. But this is uh, should do it to the uh, surgical uh, moment. So if the surgeon uh, put this hexagon in the wrong place, the uh, exit cone, the exit hole for the screw can, can uh, end up exactly when we don't want to end up, like in the vestibular, in the facial part of the crown, or exactly in the middle of the cuspid. Um, since the equator hasn't got any, uh, any anti-rotational device, because it's round, it's a complete sphere, as you can see here in the, uh, behind me, behind me uh, we don't have any issue with this. So if during the surgery we need to put the implant uh, more deeper, so we have to rotate the implant a little bit more, a quarter of a turn, uh, a bit more, or we need to put um, to we need more primary stability, so we have to screw it in a little bit more, or we feel that we are using um, uh, um, too, too we are using too much uh, uh, strength, uh, too much torque to screw in the implant, and we need to stop before to come to the right place. So having um, non uh, uh, having an anti rotation. Um, having an anti-rotation system um, can be, um, can be uh, an obstacle for the prosthesis. Um, since we have a complete sphere, a complete round sphere, uh, we, can, uh, we can overcome this. Okay, now le let's see how, why, um, okay, uh, why we, we do uh, face with tilted implant. It's easy to, to put a uh, tilted implant. A technician doesn't understand this, but they have to see that uh, sometimes, uh, very often, the bone is put in its place uh, and we have to fix the implant inside the bone. So um, these are 30 degrees of, of inclination. It's not so much, but it can be a problem if we, if we figure out how the teeth could be uh, over that implant. So the, the the screw hole is exactly in the middle of the crown, right here. Okay, Ma um, Marco, I end up with this slide yeah, and then yeah. some question and answer. Doctor, I see in the screen there is someone, don't write the, his name, but uh, is uh, ask us uh, 
what kind of the type of international connection uh, implant is possible to use uh, our attachment or equator? Uh, we, I, I answer the question uh, because uh, we have a library and we have a 1,600 different kind of the implant. And suppose the, the health of this is a, a kind of the implant is internal hexagon. Another one is a, a external hexagon and uh, sometimes we have a trilobate or a conic connection too. We have a, a, a lot, a huge of the um, uh, implant type or, or implant brand. But sometimes you don't have uh, some brand, don't worry, because uh, you send us uh, one analog or one uh, uh, inland uh, uh, cap. We take uh, the information about uh, the diameter, the length. After that, uh, we make for you and send to you exactly what do you need, uh, the equator or spherical attachment. Okay, thanks so much. And now we start uh, Dr. Baccaro. Thank, Thank you, so Marco. Much. Thank you, Marco. Okay, um, so uh, as, as I was saying, 30 degrees is not so much, but it's enough to, uh, to be a serious obstacle for the aesthetics of this crown. So the solution could be to fix the, um, to fix the framework over the implant and leave the hole uh, right in the middle of the crown. But uh, we have to, to cover the crown with composite uh, and uh, the composite could be good for the first months, but then it gets stained uh, very soon. So one solution, uh, would be the uh, cemented prosthesis that can fix, the, from an aesthetical point of view, very easily the tilted, you know, the, 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 the inclination of 30 degrees. But, as we said, it's almost impossible to remove um, this uh, once it's cemented. And then there is also a problem uh, about excess res, excess cement, um, um, because when we have uh, excess cement uh, fragments here, it's, all, it's impossible to remove all, all of them. And they can be a starting point for peri-implant mucositis. Another solution would be the, mm, the screw-it uh, solution, but we need to use a converter uh, so we need to use uh, like, uh, something like multi-unit abutment to put the main uh, uh, passing through screw uh, to put it them in the, in the singulum of the incisor or the canine. So it's good because we um, don't have the hole in the middle of the crown. We have the hole here and we can fix the, 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 the framework right over our implant. But we have four millimeters of gray titanium right in the middle of the smile of the patient. The solution that we, I'm suggesting you is to use this one. No screw at all, just a cigar ring over here, around here, obviously co uh, connected with an implant uh, in, the, uh, in the posterior position, screw it with a screw, so, so it is locked forever. And we had the advantage of a cemented prosthesis, aesthetic advantage of a cemented prosthesis, and the um, advantage of the uh, maintenance that we can have with the screwed in prosthesis. This is the smallest piece uh, that we have in the catalog uh, for, the, uh, for, the, um, for the connection without screw, and it has 1.85 millimeters height against the two mil four millimeters of the uh, most in inclinated uh, multi-unit abutment. And this is a visual uh, uh, translation of what I said of what I said till now. These are multi-unit abutment exactly in the aesthetic zone, and we we can't cover them uh, with resin or other. They are still in the smile. If we use the the system without any screw, you see you can see here an implant. Here is another implant. And here is another implant. They are without screw. The only screw we have are here and here, in the posterior region. So this is, uh, so till now we talk about the connection between teeth, between the abutment, sorry, and the teeth. And with this new abutment, we have some very, very smart advantages. The other uh, part, and it's very, very important, is the biological width connection, because since the most of us are using bone level implants, what we put, everything we put 
over our implant, cross pass through the, uh, the gingiva, through the mucosa. And this means one thing, that around our abutment, we set up the biological with connection. What do I mean with this? We mean that with the abutment, we are playing, we are ruling the management of the soft tissue seal. And what is this, the soft tissue seal? I start talking about uh, the statement from our master. Um, Brandemark stated that OSI integration is achieved only if the peri-implant mucosa heals rapidly in the marginal region, sealing supporting structures. This means that if we have a perfect seal between the mucosa, the, uh, the two flaps over our implant, if we have the seal, we have OSI integration. If we don't have the seal, we don't have OSI integration. Brandemark, of course, was talking about um, his protocol, uh, his two-step protocol with two surgical steps. Today, everything is, is changed. Now we put an implant over uh, a socket into a socket of an early extracted tooth. But also, if everything is changed, this doesn't mean that this principle is not, um, is not valid anymore. This is true is most true, if I can say this today, because it's more important now to have a seal and to maintain it for the long term. Especially if we put a, an implant in a post-extractive socket, because we have to reach that seal immediately and maintain it uh, um, uh, as soon as possible and maintain it for the long term of the, uh, of the uh, implant life. And we don't talk anymore about a seal between two flaps, but between one flap from one side and a titanium from the other side. The seal that we can gain now is between two of these. And now let's talk about these uh, terms, peri-implant mosaicitis and peri-implantitis. As Lind uh, stated in 2008, said that peri-implant disease are infectious in nature. They start from peri-implant mucositis that describes an inflammatory lesion that resides in the mucosa. Peri-implantitis also affects the supporting bone. This means that peri-implant mucositis starts from the mucosa. But now I would like to ask you, since uh, we are talking about bone level implant, the mucosa that is, the peri-implant mucosa is uh, around the implant or around our abutment. The mucosa, where the ophlogosis begins, the inflammatory process begins, is around the abutment, no more around our implant. So peri-implant mucositis is not, um, it must be uh, translated uh, into peri-abutment mucositis. And let's see with a picture what I'm talking about. Because around the tooth, we have particular uh, <clears throat> histological features that we don't have around implant, around abutment, sorry because we have blood vessels coming from the periodontum that we don't have a periodontal ligament and we don't have it in the, around, uh, around the implant. We don't have period, any uh, kind of periodontal ligament. So the, the mucosa and the connective tissue around the abutment is weaker because it's less, uh, it has less nutrition from the blood vessels. Also, um, the collagen fibers around the implant, around the teeth, sorry, are perpendicular, the sharpie fibers, so-called sharpie fibers, and they link the connective tissue directly to the root of the teeth. Around the implant, around the abutment, sorry, around the abutment, we don't have any perpendicular uh, f collagen fibers. We just have circular, parallel um, uh, fibers that runs around the implant, around the abutment, sorry, um, Closing up, closing it together like um, a collar, exactly like a collar around the abutment. The only thing that we have are the uh, basal lamina hemidesmosomes. The hemidesmosomes are uh, small corpuscles from the epithelial cell that resides here in the epithelial joint uh, uh, junction. And they are just two or, or three uh, millimeters, oh, two millimeters at least, around the implant. Um, it's the same that we have around the, the enamel, and it's the same that we have around the implant. And when we say about a soft tissue seal, I mean exactly this. Since we put an implant 
in a uh, in an uh, uh, whatever it is in an uh, immediate extractive socket or in a native bone and since we put our healing screw or our abutment permanently the, the the tissue seal that we the soft tissue seal that we gain in that moment we can maintain it for the long life of the implant and the biological seal has uh, different properties and function and function it has it gives stability mechanical resistance and morphology of the gingiva around the implant. It prevents the soft tissue downgrowth and prevents the pollution of the biological width. This is my personal experience and I guess that this is your common experience. We, this is a healing screw, obviously. And as you can see, after the healing, we have a, I put this screw exactly in the day of the surgery. When I put the implant, I put this screw over that implant. And as you can see, the healing is wonderful. We have pink gum, coral pink gum. And do you remember the picture we saw before? We had the um, epithelial ligament round here. Now I'm going to unscrew this healing screw to take the impression of this implant. Now try to guess what happened when I unscrew this one, the healing screw, what happened? I can see the perfect healing uh, of the connective tissue, the <clears throat> perfect healing of the epithelial cells. And now I can face, I can look deeply the biological weeds that I'm talking about. This is this, the, the, the sanctuary <laughs> of, the, of the long life of the implant. If I mess around with this implant uh, with this biological width i'm messing around with the life of the implant remember that here around here there is the bone we are here at the bone level so i'm the, um, it's a matter of fact that i'm getting in again into a surgery into a surgery step and and after this i put inside my transfer then i screw again my healing screw, then the technician gives me the framework to try if everything, if everything fits, uh, fits good. He, he, the technician gives me, first the, of the framework, gives me two pieces to, uh, to, to check that the, 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 the impression is good. So I do many things inside this implant. And after many, tri many trials, this is, what, this is what happened to the soft tissues. I'm messing around too much with the soft tissue and the life of my implant is losing some days uh, of its life. The best thing that I can do managing the management of the soft tissue would be to keep our, my healing screw permanently and then take the impression and, and, and do all the uh, uh, prosthetic phase steps over, this, over the uh, healing screw. In this study, uh, we can see uh, many factors influencing the bone resorption. This is a very important study. And, and one of the most uh, uh, impacting factors is just the abutment manipulation. And now I can introduce now the one abutment at one time concept. This means that once we put an abutment, we have to put it here and maintain it here for the rest of the, uh, of the work of the job because they uh, demonstrated that <clears throat> just reconnecting and this reconnecting the abutment uh, they had a, a biological width lost and they uh, measured uh, a, a starting point for the downgrowth of tissues without plaque accumulation so just mechanical skewing and a skewing skewing and a skewing produced the stop, down stop, uh, downgrowth of soft tissues and this is, as we said before, the first step for the bone dose around the implant. Here in this study from the GD, uh, they demonstrated the opposite. They put the implant once, uh, they put the abutment over the implant just once at the surgical uh, step, at the first surgical step. And they didn't uh, remove it for the impression and for the next steps. And they demonstrated the reduction of the horizontal bone remodeling. Another thing that we have to, uh, to consider is the platform switch concept. Uh, shortly, it's just to put an abutment over the implant that is narrower than the implant itself. This means that I have more space 
for uh, I have more space for the bone, for the biological wheat itself to grow over the implant level. And with some kind of internal connection, it's easy to do. And as you can see, you, you leave the space for the bone to grow over the implant. The, uh, but matter that uh, watch out that you don't have to remove this anymore after the first uh, placement of the implant. Try to imagine what happened, what would happen if I start to take away this uh, abutment, take the impression, then fix again, screw again uh, this abutment, and then unscrew again and mess around. What would happen to this? It would disappear in immediately, very soon. So let's see what's in the market to, to manage for the management of the soft tissues. The market is more orientated for the, about the implant geometry, thread geometry, surface treatment of the implants, and about the connection between implants and the abutment. And it, we have everything in the market from the polished, uh, completely polished uh, implants to the trabecular uh, uh, implant. So they said uh, everything and the opposite of everything. Because the main goal of uh, the market in implantology is to gain as soon as possible the primary stability, to gain the immediate load and to gain e earlier as soon as possible the uh, secondary um, uh, stability. But does exist a device designed for soft tissue management in the market? Yes, I can say yes, it's a long time that this exists and we are very experts with this. But mm, they are very expensive for single, and for, they are a good solution for single tooth, like this uh, custom made uh, abutments. They are very time consuming. Uh, it's uh, very, and they become very expensive when we do it for a multiple, um, uh, multiple implants supported uh, fixed prosthesis. Also, we have a one piece, the one piece implant and like this uh, one piece or like the transmucosal implant that has a fixed height of, uh, of polished implant to cross the uh, soft tissues. But this is a fixed length. So if we have um, a higher um, level of gingiva or gum or a lower than this, it may be in defect or in excess in uh, some point. Uh, like, for instance, in the uh, aesthetic region, this would be very anesthetic, anti-aesthetic. In the posterior region, it can be insufficient, insufficient to, to, to um, emerge from the gingiva, from the gum. A smart solution is the uh, multi-unit abutment because it can uh, compensate the geometry of the uh, uh, implant uh, disparallelism, but it has some problems. It, it has an empty space inside and this becomes a chamber for bacteria and other debris that grow inside. And we have a fixed height also in this, four millimeters here and two millimeters here. And as we saw in the previous slide, it can be a very uh, uh, awful outcome uh, from an aesthetical point of view. The good, the best uh, device for uh, um, soft tissue management is the healing screw. As dentists, we know exactly which height, which uh, diameter, and which shape we want to give to our uh, uh, implant to come out from the gingiva, from the bone. The best would be to have the healing screw permanent, the permanent healing screw over our implant. And this is exactly what I want to say. And talking about healing screw, we have to consider that, we never consider that they are for one single use only. They are designed for one single use only. If you see in the sleeve, uh, when you open a sleeve with a healing screw inside, it is written very clearly for single use only. Every company says this. Of course, because they want to sell us more, um, Healing screw, of course, but they are true in some way. Because after um, four months of um, permanence in the, in the mouth, um, they, can, uh, they can get very dirty. They can have a lot of um, debris around. They can have calculus, tartar around them. And we have to clean it out uh, before sterilization. And sterilization can never recreate pristine surface. The original surface is the best 
where the, the, the blood clot can wet the titanium and establish the first uh, pattern for epithelial cell to, um, uh, to migrate towards the titanium. So after we clean it out, the physical topography changes and changes the titanium wettability from the blood cloth. Um, so, uh, if we use always the same helium screw, we lose the, 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 the thread or the new screw thread. And having this perfectly new means that in our brand new implant, we are putting a new, a brand new, also a brand new um, screw. But um, if we start uh, with uh, different many uh, sterilization cycles, this means that uh, the, the screw can get oxidated, uh, can get rust, rust. Um, so um, we can uh, produce some damage to the internal screw um, of our um, implant. Also, debris may clog screw driver insertion site. So it's not possible to, um, to use our um, to use our screwdriver. And also mechanical clinical, uh, mechanical cleaning can damage the connection between implant and abutment. Uh, Marco, if someone raise up his hand, you, can you uh, please um, uh, stop me and, and then answer to the yeah, question? No, 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 no. Okay. The question is another one because someone asked me, uh, uh, it's a little better to The speaker. Uh, the question is, uh, it will be better when you uh, unscrew in uh, the screw and remove uh, the bridge uh, uh, to change uh, the screw or use uh, the old screw to use it before? And the cigarette too. Yeah, okay. Mm, th there is no need... Uh, microphone, please. Um, there is... Okay, there is no need to change the the seeker or the screw because um, when I usually do it in my daily practice, I do it uh, once per year to remove the full framework. So, uh, and the the seeker doesn't have a dynamic role, a dynamic fu function in the <coughs> in the framework because it has just a static function to keep them locked together. It's not a removable. Remember, it's not a removable prosthesis. It's it doesn't have any cycle loading or cycle fatigue. So uh, it's uh, been clipped just once and then it stays in its place. After that, the screw, um, uh, the secondary screw, the prosthetic screw is unscrewed, a screw just once uh, per year. So I, I think that, that that's uh, not uh, sufficient to produce any consumption of the screw. And also, um, as someone asked uh, in the beginning, uh, as Marco said before, um, this uh, platform, this equator platform, can ma be matched with every kind of implant all over the world, I can say. In my experience, I started just with this, and this is the, the patient that allowed me to meet uh, RAIN83. I had this uh, kind of implant, old implant. I didn't know anything about that implant and I didn't know how to treat this. I just took the impression of this implant. If you want to know how to take the impression, we can make a, another webinar dedicated to this, to implant, fixed, uh, to implant fixing problem. Imp, imp, sorry, implant problem fixing. Uh, ask Marco for this. Uh, then uh, I just screwed over this um, um, an equator and treated it exactly as it was a normal implant. The technician did absolutely didn't know what was behind uh, my uh, behind my in my abutment, so it, it can be matched with every uh, kind of implant. Uh, they have design for uh, external connection, internal connection, conomorph connection. Uh, no problem with this. Okay, I can switch this. I can skip this. So the answer, uh, I think that this kind of abutment can answer. Uh, at 100%, 100%, uh, uh, all the uh, requests that uh, modern implantology asks. Now let's get uh, uh, deep into the clinic, into the clinic. Now, this patient has a, a periodontal problem here with this tooth. <clears throat> the 45 was uh, the second premolar, lower premolar uh, was in good condition. But this tooth had different problem of um, uh, periodontal problem. 
uh, it has a big loss um, uh, of support, bond support, forecation is exposed. Uh, he had suppression many times in his life. So the solution, in my opinion, was um, to cut. Now, this is a clinical view of the patient. This is the bridge around, uh, right here. One, two, three pieces. And from the uh, top, we view from the top. Um, okay, Marco, before uh, I go on. I'm sorry. Actually, Nico. Sorry, uh, doctor, but uh, we have another question about uh, yeah. uh, how much torque is better to tight uh, the screw. If you okay. want, I reply the question. Usually, okay. the rain company invite. In Invite the, the people respect the rules uh, give you the implant company and uh, when the company give you one kind of the uh, torque is better to tie to the screw you need to screw it to the button the uh, tight of the um, invited the company screw it it's uh, true doctor of course um, microphone um, yeah, uh, as Marco said, just follow the recommendation of your implant brand company. Uh, if your implant brand company says 25 torque of kilonewton, then you screw, uh, you, you screw your equator over your implant at 25. Don't exceed, uh, in any case, don't exceed 25 uh, torque because it can, you can produce damage to the uh, uh, screwdriver uh, engagement. Um, and the secondary screw, the, pro the small screw, uh, must be screwed at no more than 10, 15 uh, kilonewton. So uh, this is from the top, from the Cusal view, and the solution is to cut the bridge right here, so I could extract this molar with problems, and uh, polish, this, uh, polish this crown, and uh, consider this as an independent crown, a single crown, exactly as a single crown. Um, since I had uh, a, a, a big man, it was a big man with a big jaw and strong masseter muscles, I preferred to put two uh, small implants rather than one uh, big implant. Two, small, two four implants, four per 10 millimeters, uh, to put over one molar. So this is the clinical image from the occlusal view. Here it's already cut. I preferred not to polish right now here uh, because I didn't want uh, metal uh, debris uh, to get into the, the wound, into the, the, the wound, exactly, of extraction. The extraction I uh, remade and then two implants placed in its place. Notice they are two bone level implants and they, this kind of implant, they have a conomorph connection. And Try to visualize the, the diagrams that we uh, saw before and everything we said before in this previous slide. We have everything here clearly exposed. So this is the beginning of our heal, the healing, the beginning of the healing of the um, biological width. And remember, if I use my traditional method of keeping impression of the inside of the implant with um, engaging transfer that gets right into the implant. I always get inside this. I always get inside this. And I violate, I'm violating the biological with every time I do it. So the best thing that I can do right now is to clean up perfectly and make a sterilization of the, of the hollow body of the implant, dry it, and then fix a permanent healing screw right here in the surgical moment, in the first surgical moment. So the, the hollow body of the implant is perfectly sealed forever. I have to say, I want to look at this also from an endodontic point of view. I'm an, I love endodontics and I do, I do practice endodontics every day uh, in my office. And I want to look at this exactly as I look at my root canal. Um, exactly as I want my root canal perfectly be sealed by the gutta perca, I want that my uh, body, that the body of the implant must be sealed by a, a, a conomorph connection with a perfect uh, uh, seal, mechanical seal. My impression for the next step will be always on the top of this. So I suture out, I suture, sorry, I suture 
um, after I put the um, female cap over the, the equator and then wait for the healing. After two months, that's the healing, wonderful healing around uh, the, the abutment. And now I'm, I'm able to maintain the one abutment at one time concept. I put the abutment here once and I never removed it from uh, after the first step. And then I can also match the second important uh, concept, the platform switch, uh, the switch platform concept, because I'm giving space for the bone to grow over the implant. After that, remember the second slide that I put, I have to take the impression. Now implants uh, you see from above are never, can never be perfectly parallel. And I'm not using uh, engaging transfer because I'm taking impression of the equator, not of the implant. And the equator has a non-rotational connection. So I don't mind, I completely don't mind where uh, the hexagon is uh, during the surgery. I'm taking the impression uh, of the uh, implant with a non-engaging uh, transfer, metal transfer. And this is the aspect of the transfer inside. So the only information that I need is the axis of the implant here, the position, and where is the plate? Where is the uh, 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 plate of the external connection? Because this kind of connection mimic the best uh, prosthetic connection that was invented for multiple fixture. And the best connection that was invented is the external hexagon, as Branemark did in the beginning on the implantology. So let's back to the origin with a modern and futuristic perspective. After that, in the lab, they start the digital workflow for the realization of the prosthesis, the digital acquisition, and then the digital <coughs> manufacturing. Then after that, we, we we have all the pieces, the digital pieces, uh, matched together. We have the, the shape of the crown around here, over here. The shape of the cylinder for, uh, that has the housing for the seeger and, and the spacer because the cylinder must be cemented inside the crown. So these are the cylinder, virtual cylinder, um, with the spacer around it. The cylinder, real cylinder, not more virtual, real cylinder cemented inside the crown, okay, right here. So we have three passivation system applied right now. The first passivation system is the impression. Take the right system for the impression. I didn't take the impression of the uh, inside of the implant. So I, take, I took the impression of the plate of the equator. It would be the same if I took the impression of an external hexagon. And in my impression, there, were, there was no distortion at all. Second step, we have a cylinder glued in the, uh, the framework. And this is the second step. This is the best way to, get, to, get, to have, to obtain passivation in the lab. And the third passivation system is the cigar ring inside. This is a plastic ring that works as um, a stress um, a shock, a stress uh, distribution, a, st a stress absorber system. Now, uh, the uh, uh, cigar ring and the equator helps me a lot when I have to try the match between the two components because I hear a, a audible, a perfectly audible click when I clip on the, the teeth over the two implants. After that, I screw up everything and check that the, my connection is perfectly matched. Since I have um, this, uh, the connection, I, I, I brought the connection right at the gum level or a little bit above the gum level, it's easy to check um, without, without x-ray, just checking by visual, um, by, by visual enhancement. And this is the finished product in the lab and in the mount.
this is the crown now cut and polished perfectly polished and now i treat this exactly as it was a single crown for its tooth and then <clears throat> Uh, in the permanent teeth, we can, in the definitive one, we can see uh, everything we are, we are talking about uh, uh, the one uh, abutment one time, the um, switch platform system. And this is the, the job finished. Yeah, okay. Marco, um, since we are going to talk about a uh, next argument, uh, I ask, uh, I can, Marco, can you? Answer doctor, some question. Um, sorry, doctor. You have another question. Uh, it's a very clever question, and I suppose it's better you reply directly. Uh, impression poste is being uh, specific for equator attachment for impression taking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They are designed exactly for the for the. Um, they are impression transfer, uh, designed exactly for the equator, like this. This has exactly the same uh, uh, space, the perfect space for the equator. Don't use any other transfer. Thank you, Gabriele. Okay. Okay. Now let's uh, see a more complex case um, because we have um, uh, now we have the opportunity to use this system to build up. Um, um, to build up an immediate load, uh, full arch uh, prosthesis, uh, a temporary prosthesis. So what we need is a special, just a special, and we'll see in details, a special uh, abutment with two uh, holes for the wire connecting together. So let's, uh, let's have a look step by step what we are doing. So first of all, we have this um, denture like uh, impression tray. This is an impression tray, okay? And we have this impression tray um, um, separated from the <coughs> anterior re region because we have to check the um, occlusal uh, registration with the impression tray, with the teeth. But since the patient, our patient, has its bridge fixed uh, till now, we have to check it without the frontal teeth. So the technician cuts this part away. So this is the patient. And she has all the teeth in the um, frontal region from K9 to K9. Um, in, uh, the impression tray is a special impression tray, as you saw, because it has mounted teeth. Um, because we, with one step, we have to take the impression of the implants and the, the position of the, of the mount. As you saw, sorry, as you saw before, I just want to, okay. As you saw before, there are two implants in the mouth of the patients. The, she has two implants put in the past. And we use these two implants. We just act. So you have two implants in the mouth, uh, already placed uh, 10 or 15 years ago uh, by a, another dentist. We took advantage of this because we had two implants ready in the mouth and we put over that implant. We didn't know what implant were, was, were that, were those, but we put two equator over this. And so we treat as, exactly as they were implant put by us. Before we start, we check the vertical height and we check the vertical height with the impression tray that we uh, uh, build, uh, be, that we have already built. Then we check, we, we lock the bite of the patient, the occlusion of the patient. We lock everything with resin. This is resin because we, we, will go, we are going to take the impression after the surgery with this, exactly with this. And we need a strong guide for the patient to, um, to where to rely her jaw, because after that, the patient will be tired uh, with a lot of anesthesia. And, and to uh, register the vertical height after the surgery is difficult without any guide. But we have that, um, that um, impression tray that we will match, we will glue in uh, with the uh, frontal incisor and we will take the impression with that. After this, <clears throat> once that I am sure that everything fits perfectly, the impression tray is the first step and it's very important to check that everything is right with that. After that, I can start the surgery and put implants where I want to put them.
as you can see here, you see the two old implants. And I put over these two old implants my two new equator. One and two. I take new equator for the uh, new implant that I'm putting now right now. And close the hollow body of the implant once forever. We are going never, we are never going to, uh, we are never going to open this uh, uh, during the lifetime of the prosthesis. Even if the patient break the, the, the ceramic, even if the patient break everything, and we need to unscrew everything, we are always going to unscrew it uh, outside of the, of the gingiva. We can screw the equator, as you saw, by hand. The first was, uh, was screwed by hand, or with the hand uh, piece, uh, the implant driver. So with the implant driver, we can check, exactly check the torque uh, we are screwing the equator. Um, um, someone asked in the beginning, which is the torque? We you can set uh, the torque in, with, the, with your screw, with your handpiece, with your implant driver. You can set the torque at the um, recommended torque by the implant company. And then you put the transfer, mini plastic transfer. These are the transfer. Mini plastic transfer. They are very low profile transfer because they have to fit inside the impression tray that we saw before. So clip all the uh, plastic transfer and then check that uh, your impression tray doesn't interfere with any of that. You see that there is some contact here and some contact here of the um, um, impression tray. Then you have to check it and um, dig out uh, with a burr every contact you have until the impression tray rely only, only ex exclusively, sorry, on the gingiva. Then squeeze in your impression material it has to be a very uh, hard, heavy body um, silicone because you need something very flowable uh, during the impression positioning. After you ask the patient to close the mouth and to, get, uh, to bite exactly the same bite we uh, checked in the beginning, and then you remove it. After um, the hardening of the impression material, you need a very strong material because the analog and the transfer are very low profile, are very short, so you don't have enough um, mass of material to uh, keep them firmly in the position. The transfer and the analog match together and then you fix it. This I was talking about. You need a very hard material here because you have to keep them in place perfectly during the, uh, prosthetic, the, the, the lab procedure. After that, uh, the, the stone is um, <clears throat> the stone uh, is made out of this impression. Perfect. And then we use this kind of abutment. You see that, that there is a, a a track here, a hole and a track and a track where you can. Here is the hole where you can. Um, um, just uh, pass through a wire, a metal wire, a titanium wire. You need a titanium wire, it's in the catalog, because you, don't need, you need a wire that doesn't have any elastic memory. So this was an iron made, uh, a steel, um, in the beginning I used this uh, steel wire, but this doesn't count. If you use a, um, the, the the titanium wire that you have in the catalog, you don't have this problem that I had in the beginning. So once you, everything is put inside, like a necklace, exactly, um, everything is kept together by the wire, titanium wire, that is pliable without any memory, elastic memory. You ply them and then you uh, fill everything up with resin. Uh, uh, another detail, very important detail. Remember that this is a surgical impression. So it has all the sockets, all the um, uh, suture, uh, all details of the gingiva, of the wall. So close them with, with wax everywhere you, you, you can. Like this, like this, this is wax. Because otherwise the resin that you are going to squeeze in, that you are going to put in, 
will get into the socket or here. And it's time consuming to, uh, it's uh, faster if you close all the holes, all the imperfections here with uh, wax before. Then mask the, all the metal parts and then match together the teeth of the impression tray that we had before, mesh them with the frontal incisor. And then <clears throat> after that, we have this silicone guide that we made in the beginning. Silicone guide that allows us to keep the, the teeth in, in this exactly same relationship with the uh, wax, with the stone, sorry, with the cast. So put the resin inside. After that, you just need to polish, fi to finish and polish the, the temporary bridge. And in the afternoon, uh, in the afternoon, after uh, three or four hours uh, in the afternoon, in the morning we did the surgery, and the afternoon the patient waited in the uh, office. The this is the real time, no shortcut. This is the real time when we deliver the temporary uh, bridge to the patient. Clip and clip. This is the um, prosthetic step of the immediate load of a day of surgery. And the most important, at this point, the technician gave us a perfectly finished and polished temporary bridge. In, if, before this, the technician uh, gave you uh, um, something um, not finished. Uh, they gave you um, a, a framework that you had to rely, to rely over the abutment you had in your office to uh, clean up, finish and polish. And this doesn't exist anymore. Marco, there was an intervention yeah, before. No, there is a Okay, we want to keep the quantum tempo in the Okay. See, sì. there, uh, as soon as possible. In the afternoon, usually I, I, I put the, this uh, in the afternoon. Uh, in the morning, I do the surgery. In the afternoon, I do the, the I, I, I deliver the, the framework, the, the, the temporary bridge. Another case, another case in which I would like to show you something more. This patient had this kind of bridge, old, very old bridge made by a previous dentist. All the um, teeth were decayed, deeply decayed inside. And we decided for a full arch treatment. One important thing, this uh, abutment, uh, this implant, sorry, didn't reach the right torque for the immediate load. But that doesn't mind because I, I didn't load it with a, with, a, <clears throat> with, a, with a temporary bridge, I, but I put my healing screw, my equator over that. Uh, just the same, because this is my permanent healing screw. After that, in the afternoon, I put my, this is the uh, clinical aspect of the temporary, temporalization, and this is the, the, the follow-up. As you can see, I maintained the biological width. I used uh, the, the one abutment one time technique and the uh, switch platform technique. And this is the definitive solution. And this is along the time. Okay, I go fast because it's late. I'm sorry, we started with a little delay. Um, we have two more cases and then we end up. In this case, sorry, the patient came with this removable prosthesis and uh, a failed uh, implant uh, above here. We removed this failed implant and placed four new implants. And the steps are always the same. First of all, we have to, to, to find a vertical dimension here. This part was completely moving, so th this doesn't count. This is not a fixed uh, referment point. We started, we started with a new referment point, like this, exactly. This is uh, the impression tray for the lower arch, exactly as, the same as we did for the upper arch. After we put implant, we cleaned 
you see some blood after to, to fix the the equator clean it's important to clean uh, the inside of the chamber of the, the hollow body of the implant and then seal it forever once forever then how to check uh, that our impression tray doesn't touch the interfere with the <clears throat> with the uh, transfer with the plastic transfer simply just simply uh, simple just simply um, uh, stain the the transfer with toothpaste or lipstick something uh, that is thick enough to stay in its place and then check that there is no no uh, no trace of that uh, paste in the in the in the impression tray otherwise if you see some trace of that uh, dig it with a bore until there is perfect passive uh, fit of the impression tray. Then you have um, the same, um, the same uh, bite check uh, uh, in, on, upon which the, the patient, after we put the, this, uh, exactly the same uh, mini transfer, small uh, low profile transfer, and we put the silicone over this, we ask the patient to close in the, in the bite before. Marco, yeah, someone was asking, Yes, uh, uh, some of your colleagues uh, write uh, another question about uh, the component and impression post. Are everything? Sorry, the component? Uh, all components and impression post and everything. I don't know it's uh, about what, because uh, I suppose the same question you uh, replied before. Mm -hmm. about uh, uh, the, uh, the impression uh, transfer. Sorry, I may ask to colleague, Dr. Setu, to ask again because I, I, yeah, I, I don't understand the, the, uh, the question. S sorry, colleague, if you can ask, ask again, I, ah, okay. Ah, okay, perfect, you I got the nice. answer, wonderful. Okay. Um, so this is the Marco, sorry, the speaker. Thank you. So this is the, the temporary bridge with the pink part, of course. You see the suture round here uh, in the in the afternoon. Exactly the same procedure. Okay, this is the building up of the framework. I don't spend a lot of time. This is the de definitive, sorry, the definitive framework. So um, we remove, simply remove the, the, the temporary, after six months, we remove the temporary bridge and then apply the, the, the definitive framework. As you see, in this, with this kind of implant, it was not, not possible to have a stronger uh, switch platform um, uh, profile with the new implant that I used like this in the upper arch, it was easier. And as you can see, when I uh, can get the, the, the right um, uh, switch platform profile, it's easier to have a better outcome of the biological width. Okay, the last, uh, the last argument, the last uh, case is this one. This is a very uh, destroyed mouth. <clears throat> and I needed something that I can uh, remove uh, and uh, and clean every year or more often than every year. After the surgery um, and after the temporary bridge, after six months of um, temporary bridge, um, we had this situation. Despite the starting condition, you see the patient has um, a, a, an, an, an uh, unsuspectable um, healing uh, because I think not because of his skill in cleaning, because he's still the same, but I think that it's because of the system. Because this system allows me to check better, in a better way, the, 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 the hygienic condition of this patient. After that, I can take the impression. It's the time of impression. This is the x-rays of the uh, temporary bridge, as you see. In the temporary bridge, I don't mind if there are holes in the frontal incisor because it's a temporary, so I can, um, I can deal with it with the patient. Um, and I prefer to have all the screw also in the temporary. And then it's time to uh, use the, uh, to, to, uh, to take the impression. 
Now, as you can see, the impression always taken outside the gum level, and it's very important because I, want, don't, I never want to go inside the implants. All the implants mesh together with a wire and splinted with a resin. This is a method that I don't like because it can um, produce some distortion. I prefer the perfect passive um, impression with uh, just with impression material because I want my transfer to contact with the implant only with the horizontal flat connection or with internal and vertical uh, connection. Since I have horizontal flat connection, I don't, yet, I don't have any problem in extracting the impression. I want to demonstrate that there is some problem with this. Maybe I tighten the knot here too much. Maybe the resin um, shrinked too much, but we had some problem. And we checked it out uh, with the splint, with the jig, with a, with a check. Another advantage and, uh, of this system is that you can check the wax and the height of the, of the, um, of the vertical dimension when you, when you make the definitive, uh, the definitive uh, denture, fixed prosthesis bridge, that you can uh, take advantage of the um, bowl because it's a, 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 it's in, it's a matter of fact, it's um, a bowl attachment, of course, and you can use it as a ball attachment during the construction of the prosthesis. You can uh, put inside the resin plate the female cap, exactly the same female cap that we use for the removable prosthesis. So you have uh, just to clip them on the implants with a clip, with a snap. And we have a very fixed referment point to check the bite, to check the articulation of the patient, and to check the vertical dimension. Without this, I don't know how to do. And uh, I could use uh, the adhesive paste for dentures, but you have to lie on the gum, the gingiva, and you always have some movement, two or three millimeters of movement. And two or three millimeters of movement are kilometers, not millimeters. After that, I check with the, <clears throat> with the jig. I want to be sure that there is a perfect match between my impression and my model and the mount. And I see that uh, in the last implant, I have a gap. Maybe, as I said, because I tighten too much the, the, the dental floss or the resin shrinked and push the, the, the transfer, uh, tilting it. So I had to cut it and then uh, glue it in again and give it to the lab. And the lab just, sorry, and the lab just mm, uh, made a hole uh, extract the analog and put the analog in the, um, inside the new jig, in the new position, and then um, put some cast over here, uh, down here, and put a new, the new, um, and registered the new position for the analog. After that, the technician gives me the framework. As you see, it's, um, as you can see, it's a remove, uh, sorry, a fixed, screwed, retained prosthesis, but it has the uh, exactly the same volume and, uh, um, and space of a uh, cemented restoration. Even smaller, maybe I can say. Since we don't have a screw here, here and here. So six implant, three screw, and three without screw. Because I just need here the retention of the cigar to keep them in its place. Otherwise, as you can see here, the uh, hole of the screw would get out from the fa facial uh, part of the, from the facial crown of the incisor uh, or the canine. The long-term checkup. Okay, and I end up uh, with this picture. Sorry, it's in, still in Italian, but that means that when you reach the top, you are only at half the way what does it mean? That, that means that when you uh, uh, reach the top, you have to come back home safe. Otherwise, your, uh, your um, <clears throat> expedition didn't succeed. And that's the same thing in implant surgery. Because when we finish, when we end up the, the implantology, the implant placement, we are happy. We have that sense of relief when we reach the top, exactly the same sense. Because we uh, made the most difficult part, of course, but 
the descent in the mountain is the most dangerous part because uh, the most of the alpinists die when they come back home. And the same when we put the prosthesis over our implant. When we put uh, the teeth over our implant, it's exactly the same. Uh, it's the most difficult part and where most of it accident occur. So keep in mind that. With this, I end up and I thank you, a listener, um, for following me. And I'm ready to answer all the questions you have.